energy efficiency was the field that I came to the commission with. That was a very strong interest of mine. And one of the reasons for that is that the energy efficiency is, is very quick to, to produce. It's very cost effective. It's cheaper than almost, it's cheaper than anything you can do. It depends on what you, how you save energy. And there's a million ways to save energy. Um, lighting, insulation, different types of materials. It, it really is an incredibly rich and interesting field. But it's a little complicated for people who, in the power business who think in terms of great big power plant, 500 megawatts, you know, great big nuclear plant, 1200 megawatts. Um, so energy efficiency is, you know, a few kilowatts. <laughs> and um, each, you know, each thing you do, you know, like a light bulb is, uh, uh, you know, much, it's a little tiny thing. And I always say you can add up these little tiny things and you can get up to 500 megawatts when you, when you need to. California has put a lot of money into energy efficiency. Billions now. We are up to over a billion dollars a year. And how is that collected? It's collected on a uh, surcharge on your bills. It's a public purpose program surcharge. It's called PPP. That's the line that you see on your bill. And uh, that pays for um, energy efficiency, it has been paying for rebates on solar panels and things like that as well, and also for low-income programs. So the ratepayers actually provide the funds for Yes, the yeah, the ratepayers pay for energy efficiency, and we also pay for the rebates that people get when they get solar panels on their roof. Um, and this is considered a good thing. It was originally called the public goods charge, now it's called the public purpose program. So anyway, this is recognized that this is a good thing for people. Um, one of the things that I discovered though that's very weird is that these programs uh, have, have been left out of the planning for the system. And what we have really been doing in California is building two separate energy systems that are not connected to each other. Uh, and, and that is because they're, the people who have been thinking in terms of big power plants didn't know what to do with energy efficiency and did not want to have to bother with it. And the commission didn't tell them you have to do something with it. So they basically just um, ignored it in many ways. They inflated their demand forecast and then they subtracted the figures that the the commission said, okay, utilities have to get such and such amount of savings this year. And so the utilities had these inflated forecasts and they could easily subtract that big number and say that they were using energy efficiency, but there wasn't really any there there. If you wanted or needed power in a particular place, um, if there was a new subdivision built and or a you know big expansion in a city, and that particular um, transmission line or distribution line, the, the power lines that come into your neighborhood, um, n didn't have enough room to carry big power from big power plants. One way to deal with that is by using energy efficiency. Then you just don't you don't have to build a new power line, and you, or you don't have to build a new a new power plant. Uh, so, so that is one of the things that you can do with energy efficiency. But they were not doing that because they refused to track where it is. It is absolutely a conflict of interest. As I said, the, P the PG&E and Southern California Edison and San Diego Gas and Electric get profits on every uh, power plant they build, every transmission line they build, every little truck they buy. I mean, all of their infrastructure, it's called steel in the ground. That is what's called rate base, and that is where they make their profits. So taking that away, in other words, you need less transmission and distribution lines or you need less um, power plants, that's something that the utilities have 
you know, it's, it's against their business model, basically. And somebody a long time ago came up with a really ridiculous idea that, oh, well, we should keep utilities in the energy efficiency business and just give them a, a whole bunch of profits for it. So for a while, the commission was giving 30% profits, trying to convince utilities that it was worthwhile to do energy efficiency. Well, that was nonsense. They were basically, as I said, not really using energy efficiency for anything, but they were getting profits. So basically, they were getting profits on the power that they still had to build or the transmission lines they still had to build plus profits on energy efficiency hey so that's pretty cool they did energy efficiency projects some better than others not that you know not the best by the by far i've studied an independent system uh that's happening in texas amazingly enough um, where they're getting four and a half times the savings that we get in california from their energy efficiency programs and this is because they are independent programs, the utilities do not control them. And it also is a great job creator and a business creator for a local community. And so this is what my organization, Women's Energy Matters, has been promoting for years. Sierra Club has, has been promoting this program too. And uh, we are starting to see the Marine uh, Clean Energy uh, Agency also utilizing this. But the utilities you know, are dragging their feet on that program um, and instead they're using their energy efficiency money to try to prevent the formation of, of marine clean energy. For one thing, they offered cities, oh here you don't need to have a public power agency, what you need is just more, we'll give you more energy efficiency money, more of every kind of energy efficiency program. And uh, we actually videotaped PG&E making these bribes basically in the broad daylight. Uh, so I tell people that energy efficiency is really where the bodies are buried in the system. This is the chart and we put this together uh, based on the information that we, um, uh, that the Commission, the California Public Utilities Commission, um, presented to the procurement proceedings. So this, these are all the figures actually from the Commission that say um, we're going to have this much power, this much energy savings and other types of programs, you know, renewable programs. Everything is included here. But when you get down to the bottom line, we got 150% of the power that we need today, and in 2020, they have 156% of the power. You need a little bit of a cushion, seven to, right now the cushion is supposed to be 15%, so you basically have a 50% cushion instead of a 15% cushion. And when I looked at this, I thought, well, heck, you could just take the nuclear power out of this, and then you'd still have a huge excess of power in California, 40% essentially. Um, excess power today and uh, and 45 percent in 2020. Um, so we can move to a clean and cleaner energy system if we plug this stuff in. This is the, the tricky part is that the Commission has not really made it possible to use that and this is where I've been just in, asking them to start tracking the energy efficiency and the rooftop solar. I mean, people think that they have, that they're really doing something good for the, for the planet and, and cutting down on the kind of energy that is used in, in, by the utilities by putting solar panels on their roof. I'm really sorry to tell you, the commission is not counting that towards the uh, total of energy that the utility has. So they would still need to build a power plant because they're not utilizing what's on your roof. Local solar rooftops, utilities are not making any money on that. And they, and not only that, but they're, the need for power, uh, if you counted that towards the, um, the power system, then they wouldn't need as much power. And so they wouldn't need to build uh, power plants or to buy power from uh, merchant generators, but they also would not need to uh, put up new transmission and distribution lines uh, because if you've got solar on your roof and you can use it in, you know, in particular if you're in a business 
or if you can serve your neighborhood with your solar power and especially if you have add storage to that which makes it a 24-hour resource instead of just a um, when the when the sun is shining uh, this is a challenge to the utilities that they haven't figured out what to do with and they haven't figured out how to make money on it and so they, they don't want to do that they make profits on steel in the ground and so this, this is steel in the ground that the utility is in control of. So the, when they're building a new transmission line, uh, they make um, 10 to 12 percent profits, which is better than anybody else is getting on any kind of investment these days. And it's a heck of a lot for ratepayers to have to pay that in addition to the cost of the power itself and the actual um, infrastructure costs. And why is it that they get 10 to 12 percent? Well, that's what the commission is. It's uh, The utility business is very dug into our political system. There, um, There's a very tight relationship, uh, partly because the utilities are very generous to politicians, and uh, the system of, of u public utilities commissions is easy for the for the utilities to uh, to have a great deal of influence over. This is a big issue in Japan is that the regulatory commission over nuclear power in Japan was just asleep at the wheel and that's been the problem in the, this country. And most nuclear issues, the actual operations of the plant are regulated by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in Washington. There are things however that the state isn't is uh, in charge of regulating and so those are the issues that I'm focusing on in the in the um, investigation of San Onofre and also in the procurement proceeding is here's what the state can do and what the state can do is add up the costs and is determine whether it's cost effective which is I don't believe it is the cost of nuclear power if you add everything in um, which includes a lot of security that you don't need at a, certainly you don't need at other power plants, the incredible amounts of security that you have to have to run a nuclear power plant. Uh, there's a lot of cost um, in terms of the waste that uh, is not being solved by the federal government. They said they would, but they haven't, and so there's all this waste piling up on our shores, and there's earthquake potential in California, huge potential for earthquakes. We've got two nuclear power plants. Um, the San Onofre power plant is sitting right on the beach, like right there. You can actually walk alongside it. With, it's a very famous surfing beach called Trestles. And uh, so you see people fishing down there, which is just like really scary to me because uh, radiation is a, just a nightmare. But that's something that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is supposed to be taking care of us and we are supposed to think about that. So we're supposed to just think about these um, uh, financial issues. But the other thing that the state is supposed to be uh, regulating at the Public Utilities Commission is the reliability of the power plants. Well, San Onofre has been shut down for a year now and it's obviously not reliable. And the, previous fall it actually shut down for a week and blacked out all of Southern California. Uh, San Onofre was the cause of the, of the great blackout of September 2011 according to the the federal um, final report. Uh, so there's a big reliability problem and that's really where I came back into the nuclear issue because I was in the procurement proceeding and I said um, right after Fukushima, look, we should be talking about how to replace these nukes with clean resources so that if they went offline for whatever reason, I mean they can go offline you know and shut down because there's some equipment failure, which is what happened with San Onofre, there can be a human error. That's what happened with Three Mile Island and with Chernobyl in Russia. or God forbid, there's an earthquake in California that is greater than the plant was designed for, and these plants were not designed for this big an earthquake as we now know is possible. We could end up with something like Fukushima here, which is, uh, I mean, the, when you look at what happened to Japan and to the areas 
around Fukushima, that used to be their organic farming part of Japan. Well, California has enormous amount of agriculture for the whole state, for the whole country. We grow food. There's exports around the world from California. And so these are kinds of things that the commission really needs to be thinking about. The port of Los Angeles has 40% of the um, commerce that comes in from, uh, from abroad comes through the port of Los Angeles. And that's within the 50 mile radius of, of the San Onofre nuclear power plant. And that's the area that we, our Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, told Japan you need to evacuate people from that area. And now there are huge exclusion zones around the Fukushima plant. They're in a funny shape because it depends on where the wind blew the radiation. That's true in Russia. Uh, God forbid that would happen in Los Angeles. I mean, that's what we're looking at. Los Angeles and San Diego um, are both within 50 miles of San Onofre. It's just crazy. It's eight and a half million people. And that's a, you know, it's a lot of pricey real estate. This is the way they think, you know, it's like, let's talk about the money rather than talk about the human calamity. Uh, but obviously there is an enormous uh, tragic consequences to people who can never go home again. Um, so, so anyway, this is all totally unnecessary because, as I said, we have plenty of power without San Onofre. There it is. Plenty of power. And, but the trick is how do we connect this up? How do we get the commission and the utilities to make the energy efficiency and renewable energy do the job that they can do. They're perfectly capable of doing. Obviously, if you have a solar panel on your roof, any solar panel will generate power. And there are storage mechanisms that will allow you to store that power as well. Um, there's also other types of, of renewable energy, like wind, and then there's all sorts of different types of energy efficiency and something called demand response, where you can um, interrupt power at a particular time when you have a, a you know, a need for um, more power on the grid. So the, you know, a business or, or even sometimes a, a residential customer can sign up to get paid to reduce the amount of power they're using at a particular time of day or in a particular season. And uh, those programs are also quite possible uh, to use to replace a nuclear power plant. Um, we know this, it's not like it never happened before. Sacramento has a public utilities uh, district. They have a municipal utility district. It's called the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, SMUD for short. And they had a nuke up there called Rancho Seco. And the people of Sacramento voted to close that thing down. This is not an investor-owned utility. This is a publicly owned utility. And their um, rates are 20% lower than the investor-owned utility rates wow. and have, have been for many, many years. And in fact, they were lower even after they shut their nuclear power plant down. So what they did in Sacramento, because their, their nuclear power plant had some problems and so it shut down unexpectedly. And then there was a referendum and people voted to keep it closed. So it wasn't like they had made a plan to close their nuclear power plant. So what do you do in that situation? energy efficiency because you can I mean you can insulate a house tomorrow or next week it takes years to build power plants and that's why energy efficiency is such a wonderful resource to use to replace a nuclear power plant or anything that goes offline um, so and th this is a map that shows how the issue has been played out in this last proceeding that I was in. This is the procurement proceeding of 2012. And we were dealing just with this area here, which is called the Los Angeles Basin. 
and then uh, there was another proceeding dealing with San Diego, and here is the San Onofre power plant, this little star down there. We can put this online, but essentially what the commission wanted everybody to focus on was this area um, cannot get power from all over the state because there is a limited amount of transmission coming into LA. So they're more dependent on what is actually happening in the Los Angeles basin. And that is where you need to use things that are local. In other words, your local solar, your local energy efficiency, your local demand response and storage and some other things called combined heat and power. They're a very efficient way to um, use an industrial facility. Those things are perfect for this kind of an area. Los Angeles Basin is one of the most polluted air. In fact, it is the most polluted air in the, in the whole country. Um, that's been known for years. LA smog is, is very well known. And so now, rather than build more power plants in Los Angeles, we should be closing those power plants down that are there. Um, we should permanently close them and replace those power resources with these clean energy resources. And the commission hasn't even yet dealt with the fact that San Onofre is not there. So all of the, the replacement resources for San Onofre in 2012 was just, you know, stopgap measures that the commission and the utility and the grid operator um, got together in the back room and figured out, oh, well, we'll start up this old power plant here and, and uh, hope for the best, basically, instead of looking at these clean resources. So that was what I what I did in the procurement proceedings for the last year and a half is say, okay, this needs to stop. We need to have a public process with people who are really committed to renewable energy and energy efficiency and who know a lot more about it than the utilities. I mean, they, they kind of hold their nose. I mean, they, you know, they do have people who know about it, but they, they're not popular even within the utility. They're, these people are considered the black sheep, the energy efficiency people are considered the black sheep of the company because they're doing something that the company doesn't really want to do. Um, and anyway, that's where the, there's a really easy solution for that. Let's put energy efficiency funds into the hands of people who really, really want to do energy efficiency, and that's not the utilities. Uh, and we have seen this work all around the country in other states. And even California had an independent uh, energy efficiency program going on for about four years, uh, which I studied closely. And the independent uh, uh, companies and nonprofits and cities were doing much more cost-effective programs than all of the utility programs. So this is what uh, we could be planning for uh, in the Los Angeles area and the San Diego area that are served by San Onofre. So instead of taking it back into the back room, because we're getting ready for the summer again, uh, the summer of 2013, uh, and Edison predicted blackouts last summer in 2012, well, that wasn't, didn't happen, did it? Uh, and this year is a little different because the power plant that they used last year as a backup isn't available anymore. There's some other issues that might be coming up. So, so basically I have been proposing to the commission and these various proceedings, let's get people together who want to do these clean resources. Let's get them together with the utility, the commission, the, the grid operator, and figure out how to replace this nuke and that would be totally fun and it would be a it would really make a difference all around the country because there's and not actually it would make a difference all the way around the world because Japan certainly needs to figure this out too and other places that are um, finally thinking about closing these nuclear power plants down so that is that's the work that I do and more and more support over the years, more and more people getting into uh, p 
pieces of this of this game and um, it's it's a wonderful day because the San Onofre power plant took itself offline and so we have to do something about it which is a, a wonderful place to be and uh, and the commission is, you know, like gingerly taking steps in this direction. They are like, you know, they're, they don't want to piss off the utilities, but they are making, um, you know, the, the, the last couple of decisions that came out in the last few months have had little bits of the work that I do in them in the energy efficiency decision in November. Uh, there's a little section called Other Issues. And the other issue was San Onofre, <laughs> and so we need to put uh, energy efficiency. This is what the the commission actually told Edison, uh, and we need to put energy efficiency um, into play in the areas that are served by San Onofre. They told Edison and San Diego they should deploy their energy efficiency that way. Well, this is the first time they've ever said that. This is the first time they've ever said that in a local area they can use energy efficiency to replace a nuclear power plant. We know it can happen because Sacramento Municipal Utility District did it and California is very committed to energy efficiency so people are kind of like, yeah, this, 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 this is a good thing, this might be fun. The grid operator, who's called the independent system operator, this is because the utilities used to be running their own grids, but then during deregulation they put the California independent system operator together, um, so you call the ISO or the CAISO, and uh, that entity is a you know kind of a quasi public entity and they run they manage the grid so that anybody can um, participate in in uh, moving power around the grid uh, they have a lot of issues that I obviously have to be dealt with the energy business is very complex detailed you have to have 24 hours of power or as much as you need um, for whatever people are doing and then uh, you, there's electrical issues that have to be dealt with and there's there is an electrical issue that um, comes up when you have songs uh, San Onofre offline uh, it's, it's like a stability issue because the, the nuclear power plant used to anchor the the um, grid in a certain way so that you could put more power across the power lines if you have an anchor there. A great big power plant is what is oftentimes used as an anchor. But there are some other things that can be used and one of the things that they're talking about doing is something called a synchronous condenser uh, that they're going to retrofit this old power plant and make it a synchronous condenser so that it could take care of some of those of those issues. I mean th that's what I'm saying is if we have a working group, if we get everybody that needs to be there to solve this problem, if we get everybody together then we can solve the problem. And that is essentially what has been going on in the in the procurement proceeding um, over the last year in you know kind of baby steps, <laughs> um, but they haven't actually dealt with the nuclear power plant itself. They were dealing with the other old gas plants that need to be closed down in, in the Los Angeles area. Um, so we have had a little practice and we had a great discussion in the hearings last year about what are the barriers that need to be dealt with to make it possible to use things like energy efficiency and local solar and demand response. Uh, and and it was great because you know the ISO was saying well you know you have to make sure you're taking care of this issue and um, and the people who represented companies that were involved with demand response or the energy efficiency stuff uh, said well here's a solution here's you know here are a number of solutions and the ISO and then the utility are like oh well maybe that would work so that's the, that's the state that we're in and it's just an incredibly exciting place to be uh, but it, 
what bothers me is that when the you know when, when the rubber meets the road, they go into the back room and make their decisions there, and they come up with a lot of gas plants and not not enough clean energy. So I want to keep them out in the public and uh, uh, have a transparent process and in particular be able to have these kinds of discussions and workshops in the Los Angeles and San Diego area so the people in that area who are interested in doing energy efficiency projects and solar projects, some of the smaller businesses that are involved in this, that, that people can really participate and that local people who support this kind of change in our energy system um, will be able to be there and, and participate and, and witness what's going on and offer suggestions. I'm a great believer in common sense and you, you don't have to be the, the absolute expert uh, to, to understand what's going on. And sometimes the experts are good at finding reasons why it won't work and some people who are more adventurous come up with ideas and when they get tried out guess what they work sometimes um, so we have to make sure that that we're moving in a responsible way but uh, we have an opportunity to do really amazing things here and it's not the first time as I said Sacramento has already done it um, there are um, other other nuclear power plants have uh, have had their power replaced by energy efficiency in particular. So that is where we're at, and um, I'm having a great time working on it. <laughs> there was a totally ridiculous thing on Fox News, I guess, the other day. Is uh, they were talking about the fact that Germany has so much solar power, and you know has really started to build more and more solar uh, because they are very serious about closing down their nukes. And I guess the Fox uh, News person said, well, I guess that's because they have a lot more solar in Germany, which is hysterical because Germany is way up north. I mean, it's like northern Canada and even Alaska. That's the, the um, latitude of Germany. And California obviously has... In, we do have an incredible amount of sunshine, especially down in San Diego and, and Los Angeles. My goodness, uh, that's why people live there. Uh, and so people have been waiting for 50, 70 years to see the promise of, of solar energy uh, realized. Uh, and I'll tell you, the nuclear power is one of the reasons why it hasn't happened. Let me tell you a little story before we wind this up. This is so amazing. When, when Dwight Eisenhower became president in 1952, he was presented with an energy program. You know, here are, two, here are choices, you know, what to do about our energy going forward. And one choice is a very interesting technology. It's got a lot of problems. going to have to, you know, do a lot of, research to figure out how to make this work, but it's got a lot of promise. Then over here, this other choice is something that it's like ready to go. I mean, all the technological issues have been solved. All it really needs is just to be deployed, just to be built all, everywhere. Well, this, guess what? This is solar. This is nuclear power. And Eisenhower's actually kind of going like, well, that sounds like a good idea. But they said, oh, no, -uh, no, honey, we are all ready to roll out our campaign about uh, ready kilowatt and nuclear power. It's too cheap to meter. <laughs> Talk about a lie there. So um, Eisenhower went along with it and they rolled out this amazing propaganda campaign to promote nuclear power, which has overwhelmed the country with this, you know, I mean, the guys just love this idea of the, you know, such incredible power and it's so, you know, and, and really it's basically um, just boiling water. It's not really all that fancy, but nuclear power is intimately related to nuclear weapons. And so 
there was a feeling that we ought to be able to use this for something good. And by the way, we want to keep our nuclear weapons program going. So we continued to use nukes. And solar, in the meantime, every time it came up, the nuclear side, you know, goes, oh, well, you can't use that stuff because it's intermittent, you know, when the, what happens when the sun goes down. Well, hey, I mean, there are storage technologies and there are ways to deal with the intermittent uh, power. But that's the place that we're at right now. That is, the, that is our challenge in, in our lifetimes, is to find the, the ways to make solar power and wind power and energy efficiency and all the other clean resources. Geothermal is a great energy resource. There's a lot of options on the clean energy side. And these will just continue to be reasonably priced because they're natural, they're infinitely available. Whereas nuclear power, gas power, all those other things, I mean, they're tearing up every, every part of the country to get natural gas now, this fracking stuff. They're tearing up the oceans to get more oil, and they're tearing off mountain tops to get coal. Uh, we don't have to do that. There's a really wonderful coalition that is growing around the country uh, that I'm part of. It's, a, it's called the American Clean Energy Agenda. And it's like, no, we don't need all of the above. We need, we need to get into the renewables uh, as soon as possible and use the demand side resources like energy efficiency to smooth that transition, keep the costs down, and, and make our homes and businesses more comfortable and not use as much power. Thank you.